Then the children of Israel, journeying on, put up their tents in the lowlands of Moab, on the other side of Jordan at Jericho. Now Balak, the son of Zippor, saw what Israel had done to the Amorites. And in Moab there was great fear of the people, because their numbers were so great, and the feeling of Moab was bitter against the children of Israel. Then Moab said to the responsible men of Midian, It is clear that this great people will be the destruction of everything round us, making a meal of us as the ox does of the grass of the field. At that time Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of Moab, so he sent men to Balaam, son of Beer, at Pether by the river in the land of the children of his people, saying to him, See, a people has come out of Egypt, covering all the face of the earth, and they have put up their tents opposite to me. Come now, in answer to my prayer, and put a curse on this people, for they are greater than I, and that I may be strong enough to overcome them and send them out of the land. For it is clear that good comes to him who has your blessing, but he on whom you put your curse is cursed. So the responsible men of Moab and Midian went away, taking in their hands rewards for the prophet. And they came to Balaam and said to him what Balak had given them orders to say. And he said to them, Take your rest here tonight, and I will give you an answer after hearing what the Lord says. So the chiefs of Moab kept there with Balaam that night. And God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent them to me, saying, See, the people who have come out of Egypt are covering all the earth, now, put a curse on this people for me, so that I may be able to make war on them, driving them out of the land. And God said to Balaam, You are not to go with them, or put a curse on this people, for they have my blessing. In the morning Balaam got up and said to the chiefs of Balak, Go back to your land, for the Lord will not let me go with you. So the chiefs of Moab went back to Balak and said, Balaam will not come with us. So Balak sent more chiefs, greater in number and of higher position than the others. And they came to Balaam and said, Balak, son of Zippor, says, Let nothing keep you from coming to me, for I will give you a place of very great honor, and whatever you say to me I will do, so come, in answer to my prayer, and put a curse on this people. But Balaam, in answer, said to the servants of Balak, Even if Balak gave me his house full of silver and gold, it would not be possible for me to do anything more or less than the orders of the Lord my God. So take your rest here this night, till I have knowledge what more the Lord has to say to me. And that night God came to Balaam and said to him, If these men have come for you, go with them, but do only what I say to you. So in the morning Balaam got up and, making his ass ready, went with the chiefs of Moab. But God was moved to wrath because he went, and the angel of the Lord took up a position in the road to keep him from his purpose. Now he was seated on his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord waiting in the road with his sword in his hand. And turning from the road, the ass went into the field. And Balaam gave the ass blows, to get her back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord took up his position in a narrow road through the vine gardens, with a wall on this side and on that. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord, and went near the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against the wall and he gave her more blows. Then the angel of the Lord went further, stopping in a narrow place where there was no room for turning to the right or to the left. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord and went down on the earth under Balaam. And full of wrath, Balaam gave her hard blows with his stick. Then the Lord gave the ass the power of talking, and opening her mouth she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have given me blows these three times? And Balaam said to the ass, You have made me seem foolish. If only I had a sword in my hand I would put you to death. And the ass said to Balaam, Am I not your ass upon which you have gone all your life till this day? And have I ever done this to you before? And he said, No. Then the Lord made Balaam's eyes open, and he saw the angel of the Lord in the way with his sword in his hand, and he went down on his face to the earth. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you given your ass blows these three times? See, I have come out against you to keep you back because your purpose is not pleasing to me. And the ass saw me, turning to one side from me three times. If she had not gone to one side, I would certainly have put you to death and kept her safe. And Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have done wrong, for I did not see that you were in the way against me, but now, if it is evil in your eyes, I will go back again. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but say only what I give you to say. Then Balaam went on with the chiefs of Balak. Now Balak, hearing that Balaam had come, 
went to the chief town of Moab, on the edge of the Arnon, in the farthest part of the land, for the purpose of meeting him. And Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send to you, requesting you with all my heart to come to me? Why did you not come, am I not able to give you a place of honor? Then Balaam said to Balak, Now I have come to you. But have I power to say anything, only what God puts into my mouth may I say. And Balaam went with Balak to Kiriop Huzzath. And Balak made offerings of oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam and the chiefs who were with him. And in the morning Balak took Balaam up to the high places of Baal, and from there he was able to see the outer limits of the people.